We have been experimenting with Unreal Engine for a couple of months now. We created a basement like the one from Stranger Things, a car simulator to make a driving scene in studio, and even scanned real objects to bring them over into Unreal Engine. Now, I would still call myself a rookie because I'm just getting started with this program myself. However, I do think that I know the basics of this program. So, I want to pack the first baby steps in this very short and fast tutorial video so that you can get started with Unreal Engine as well. I'd like to show you the basic functions of the UI, how you can build a simple landscape, add a virtual camera in there and make some awesome recordings. First things first, install the Epic Games Launcher and create an account. From here, locate Unreal Engine and you want to choose Unreal Engine 5 and install that. It's still in beta, but it actually runs super smooth and it comes with some very interesting features which are very useful for virtual production. Once installed, you can launch Unreal Engine 5 and we're getting prompted with the project browser. There are some preset projects that already give you some basic functionality and under film and video you can find some that help control your studio lights and all but we're just going to start with a blank project. On the right side you also want to enable starter content which will import some basic assets that we can use to experiment with. Give your project a name and where you want to save it and hit create. Welcome to Unreal Engine. Now everyone has their preferred methods to navigate in the world but I'd like to hold down my right mouse button which allows me to use the WAST keys to move around. It's just like playing a game and if it goes too fast or too slow you can change the speed of the camera from this option right here all the way on the top. You can make it go slower or faster. And when you head over to the menu, edit and choose editor preferences, you can navigate to keyboard shortcuts to customize any key bindings to work with Unreal. By default you'll see some widgets floating around and they can be found back within your world outliner which are basically your layers. With one selected you'll find all of its properties in the details panel on the bottom such as its position and all. And this works very similar to Adobe After Effects. Next to the details panel you'll find the world settings window. And as the name says these are the global properties for the entire world. On the bottom sits the content drawer. The shortcut to open this panel is control spacebar and you can see it as your project panel in which you collect all your media and assets. The main level is the current world that we've got open. We can create another one from the ads menu as well as other assets that we can use within Unreal. And these are things like materials or blueprints. Blueprints are used to give functionality to your world or other assets. And right here is the starter content folder which we asked for when creating a project. Basically you'll find a bunch of things in here to try out, such as under props we can find a chair, which we can just drag and drop into the scene. Using the axis arrows we can move the chair around. On top we can find the tools to also rotate or scale this object and I would suggest setting custom key bindings for this. Holding down alt while moving the object will make a duplication and in the outliner we can find this layer back as well. Now to create new items from scratch we go over to the create menu on top where we can find different lights in here, virtual cameras and much more. But let's start creating a shape, the cube. Just drag that into the level and with the tools we can scale, rotate and reposition it the way we want. Now it doesn't have a material yet and creating a new one from scratch is not going to be for this video as it's more advanced. However, there's a whole library that we can choose pre-built materials from and a lot of more stuff as well but that is for later in this video. First let's check out this starter content as it also comes with a material folder. Simply drag any of these to the cube to apply and that's it. Alright so this is already the basics of how the UI works. Now let's have a look at Quixel which is probably the most exciting thing within Unreal. Going back into the drawer, click on add from here and choose add Quixel content. This is a library of real skins. These guys have partnered up with Unreal which gives you all of their assets completely for free. And these includes actual 3D models. You get a whole bunch of foliage, materials, decals and imperfections. So let's take one of these surfaces or materials right here. Just pick any, choose the quality of your download and then if you're signed in you can click on download. And then you can find this material back in your Megascans folder which has been added to your project. And these come with depth maps which you can ignore, just drag the sphere to any surface in your viewport and that's it. And of course this works the exact same with 3D models. I'm going to download a few from Quixel and also head over to the plans to download a few collections of those as well. Once the downloading is complete we can find them all back within the content 
browser as we've seen before we can then just drag and drop any of these downloaded 3d models into our scene now adding foliage to your scene works a little bit different in the top toolbar we can find some different workspaces we're currently in the editing mode but we can switch to landscape editing modes a new panel appears on the left from which we first need to make a landscape at the moment we only have a plane which is different now we can choose how big our landscape needs to be or if you want to fill the entire world you can click this button right here and then just hit create we're now in the sculpt panel from which we can select some different tools to help shape our world and for each tool we have some more options down here such as the brush size they are all pretty self-explanatory so for this quick and basic tutorial not cover all those options but basically you can click and hold to create mountains or hold down shift to make craters. So go ahead and play around with these tools and try to create an interesting scene. Once done, we're going to add a material to it. Now, going back into editing mode, we can't drag and drop materials to the landscape as we did with the cube. We're gonna have to select the landscape layer in the properties, locate the landscape material option, and from here, we can assign a material. Now, all of these are within my content drawer. Most of these are coming from the starter pack. So if I also download a few new ones from Quick I'll be able to assign them in here too. Now, I'd like to take a quick moment to talk about Storyblocks today's sponsor. It's an ever-growing demand-driven stock assets library that we've been using for many years so far. For every project, we can find new royalty-free assets, whether that is music and sound effects, 4K footage, After Effects and Premiere Pro templates or images. With over a million royalty-free stock assets to choose from, there's always something fresh and helps me to create more videos while retaining a level of quality. This this saves me time and money and I can always pursue my creative vision. And what inspires me a lot about Storyblocks is how they listen to their audience, what they want to see more in the library. One of those things is Restock, which focuses on bringing more diversity so that everyone can find royalty-free stock clips that fit their communities. I think this is really awesome. And you might think such an amazing library, that is going to cost a lot. Well, absolutely not. They have different affordable subscription plans that fit everyone's budget. The unlimited all-access plan gives you unlimited downloads of everything on Storyblocks. So definitely make sure to check it out, guys. You can click the first link in the description down below for all the information. Information, I can highly recommend it. All right, back to Unreal Engine and let's get some foliage into our scene. We've already downloaded some plans off from Quixel, so they are within my content browser. Now head over to the foliage editing mode on top and you'll find those plans that I've downloaded back in here. And you want to select those that you'd like to paint onto your landscape. I'll just select all of them. We can then take the paintbrush and simply paint these plants on the surface. It's going to randomly mix my selected plants together. If they are too dense, we can change the density of our brush right here, as well as the brush size. On the bottom, we even have some more options on how these plants should be added to the scene. For instance, we can set a minimum and maximum scale to also have a difference in plant size. Now, to erase plants, simply select the eraser. And don't worry right now, your screen might glitch as you do that, but this is normal, and this might be one of those reasons why Unreal 5 is still in beta. Now, one last really cool thing about these plants is that we can add wind animation to it. In your content browser, locate the material instance of the plants that you downloaded. It's gonna be that sphere again. Double click on it, which will open up a new window, and from the details panel on the right, find the wind property. And then just enable that, and enable then wind. And if you like, you can even change the speed of the wind and all. Then hit save and go back to the viewport. You'll see that your plants now are moving with the wind. You are gonna have to do this for every plant that you're using, by the way. All right, and that was in a very quick nutshell how you can create a landscape. Now, the idea is to mostly use 3D objects to create your environment. You wanna stack them on top of each other and all, and this is gonna look much better than if you would just assign one material to your landscape. You can find so much within the Quixel library and it's really fun to build a custom scene. Now, I will delete the plane and those chairs as well because it doesn't really make much sense anymore. So, we have this little environment, right? now and we might want to change the lighting or the position of the sun now by default we already have a bunch of lights and sky layers now to organize my layers better i'll create a folder which you can do from up here and drag all 
the lighting and skybox layers in there. And I'll do the same thing for all the other stuff. Just name that Trops. And the Sky Sphere right here has actually got a blueprint behind it, which gives some functionality to it, like the moving clouds and the stars and all, which we'll see in a moment. The light source is a directional light. It functions as the sun, because within its details, we have something very important enabled, and that is atmosphere sunlight. Now, the way that we can move the sun around is by holding down Control L, and then just drag your mouse around to reposition the sun. And you can see see that the light is changing, but not the actual sun. Now, by default, that is a limitation. And what you want to do is, with your sky sphere selected, click on Refresh Material every time. It will then bring the sun's position to your directional light position. So we could go and make it night and have some beautiful stars, or create that epic golden hour low sunlight. And by the way, we can change the look of the clouds and all, and the stars from within the properties of that sky sphere right here. Now, let's film something, guys, because we have this beautiful environment. How can we make a render from this? Well, let's first create a camera from the cinematic submenu. And we can then just move that camera around just like any other object and also rotate it just the way that we want. And by having it selected, you can see the view from that camera. We can pin this view from this button right here so that we can change our scene if needed and still see what's going on in front of the lens. Now, the camera itself also has a ton of properties such as the lens and the film settings and all. Now, I'm not gonna go into all of this, just check it out yourself. Let's animate that camera. From the content browser, we're gonna right click, go to animation, and choose a level sequence. And just like in Premiere Pro, this could be considered a sequence. Double click on it, and you'll see that it looks like a timeline, because it is one. <laughs> then click on track and choose actor to sequences. This way, we can add any layer that we have in our world into the sequence. And we're only planning to animate the camera, so let's select that one. We've got the camera here in a timeline, open its properties, and find the location. Create keyframes in the beginning for those properties, then go forward in time and move your camera to a new position. Then in the sequencer, create new keyframes for that position, and that's it. You can now see how that plays back, and I think this is probably the easiest since you might come from something like After Effects or Premiere. And now, let's render and make an MP4 from this, or a .moth, doesn't matter. But before we do that, let's first define the quality of this render. When you head over to Settings, you can find Engine Scalability settings. As you're working, we could set this to a lower value, but once you're ready to render, we're going to choose cinematic. Then go back to the sequencer, and on top you'll find a button to render your animation. And from here you can choose the video format, resolution, output directory and all. I think this is again pretty self-explanatory. Except the output directory, you have to make sure that it saves within your project folder, otherwise you'll get a read-only error. Then just hit capture movie and wait it out. I really hope that this tutorial helped you to get started with Unreal, and if you want to see that episode of how we created that upside down world, then definitely check out the video here on my left. Thank you so much for watching, thank you Storyblocks for your support, and as always, stay creative. Unreal Engine is so cool.